Hi, I'm Mark Ford, and I'm back to talk more about marimba performance. Today's topic is tone production. How to develop your sound, your tone on the instrument, how to connect with the audience and with the expressive elements of the music through your touch and your delivery of the notes on the instrument. In this video world, it's often said that people tend to listen with their eyes. Why? Because they're watching videos constantly. We're not listening, just listening with their ears. We're actually perceiving the music with our eyes as well. So this is not always an asset because we want to really focus on how the music sounds critically to be able to help develop our music. So this listening with our eyes, maybe it's not a disadvantage sometimes. Maybe we can use it as an asset. So today, let's listen with our eyes. Before we talk about tone production on the marimba, first we have to talk about the acoustical properties of rosewood and how they relate to the marimba and marimba tuning. As everyone knows, the string here is the nodal point on the marimba bar. Between the nodal points, the marimba bar is the most resonant with the deepest, richest tone. This is the fundamental, the fundamental pitch that the bar is tuned to. As we move closer to the nodes, there's another partial in this marimba bar, not just the fundamental, but also in the overtone series, the second octave partial. Okay, so we're gonna hear the, the fundamental, And as we move closer to the node, and if we touch the marimba bar just like we touch a guitar string to create a harmonic, we start to hear that second octave. And that second octave is here. So one more important point. We have to assume that this rosewood bar goes on and on. So therefore, there would be a, a nodal point, the fundamental, the nodal point or harmonic, and then more fundamental, nodal point, etc., etc., on and on. So from here, we'd have to assume as we move from the fundamental to the nodal point or harmonic, then this would move back toward the fundamental. So that this uh, edge of the marimba bar would sound with more uh, fundamental tone and be fuller. And that's correct. So how much? Let's check it out. So here we're gonna measure from the uh, marimba string cord out to the edge of the bar, a very precise measurement, and go into here and we come up with this point roughly. So the idea here is that this point on the bar should sound somewhat similar, if not exactly the same, as this edge of the bar here. Okay, let's check it out. Now they are somewhat similar, okay, but they're not exactly the same. The, the point over here is fuller, richer, and a little darker, a deeper sounding uh, tone, a more preferred tone. Over here, this is acceptable, but it's a little, it's a little thinner, just a, just a little bit. Okay, so what's the rule? Always play in the middle of the marimba bars, whether on the accidentals or the natural keys. Play only on the edge of the bars when absolutely necessary. And when you do play here, pretend that you're actually coming in at an angle to get that deepest, richest tone here. Because if you move in just a little bit, the tone is going to suffer. Now let's use our eyes to visualize that the mallets laid out here represent the attack points of your performance. You can clearly see that in the middle of the mallet, the tone will be richer, fuller, deeper. But toward the uh, ends of these mallets, the sound will be thinner because it's closer to the node and therefore cannot produce that full, deep, rich, fundamental tone. Okay? This is the windshield wiper approach. Back and forth. Okay? Just using that elbow. Now, this is not going to be very productive for tone production. Okay, you can easily record your playing with a camera, just like I have mine 
uh, posted here as you perform, you can see where are you playing on the instrument and you can hear your sound with your eyes just understanding the capabilities of the instrument. Okay, so now we're going to listen with our eyes. We would assume that if our playing points are all on the line of these mallets, then our tone would be balanced and even between all four mallets. Okay, notice that I didn't put the mallets in the direct center of the bar, but just slightly off, closer to the accidentals, and I'm really kind of following the uh, edge of the resonators on the way up. <clears throat> okay, now imagine what it would take for you to be able to see that tone and be able to stay on that line as you move up the keyboard. Okay, notice that you have to make the adjustment with your hands, that you make that adjustment with the wrist to keep your mallets right above those notes, okay? The thing what we want to avoid too that a lot of players will do is what I call the windshield wash washer approach, where the mallets move across the bars like this, where we're using the elbow as a hinge, like a, as with a door. This is going to provide sometimes the right notes, but a very uneven tone. So we have to think about dropping the back of the hand out to be able to stay in that line to be ensured a great tone. Here's an example of tone production and placement through my work Moon Chasers. And you'll notice that I'm playing in the middle of the bars 99% of the time. this session today has been of benefit to you. The best advice I can give you is to experiment. Work on your sound. Don't listen just with your eyes, listen with your ears, of course. As you work on your sound and you record yourself and you listen critically, your music is going to start to have character. And that character is going to be heard by the audience. It's going to be heard through the expressive qualities of the music. It's going to be more interesting and more musical. So work hard, keep practicing, don't listen with your eyes, and be safe. <laughs>